Welcome to our lecture online and now we're doing a second example of collisions in two dimensions and again conservation of momentum is at play here and we know that whenever there's collisions the momentum is conserved in both the x and in the y directions. The uh, two objects do not stick together, they're moving in opposite directions and one mass is twice the size of the other mass. Alright, how do we solve this problem? Kind of the way we did the first problem, it's the same approach anyway, what we say here is that momentum initial in the x-direction must equal momentum final in the x-direction and likewise we can say that momentum initial in the y-direction equals momentum final in the y-direction okay now before we go on what we should do realizing of course that our final velocities v1 final and v2 final those are the two that we're looking for are at an angle we should find the x y components of each of those final velocities first so let's do that so here we can say that this is the v1 final in the x direction and here is v1 final in the y direction likewise here we can say that this here is v2 final in the y direction and here this is v2 final in the x direction so what are those two equal to uh, I should say those four components equal to, well, V2 final in the y direction is equal to V2 final times the sine of the angle. Now notice this component can be written right over here, which makes that the opposite side to this angle right here, that would be sine of theta 2. Over here we can write that this is equal to V2 final times the cosine of theta 2. Of course, theta 2 is equal to 60 degrees. Same with our components up there, we can write this as v1 final in the x direction, which is equal to v1 final times the cosine of 30 degrees. Notice that this is the adjacent component to this angle, and if we move this component over here, it will become opposite to the angle, so this is equal to v1 final times the sine of theta 1. Okay, so now that we have our components, we can now go ahead and plug in what these equations are equal to p initial in the x direction so we have the first mass right here so we have m I did call that m2 didn't I I want to call this m1 there that's m1 and that's m2 all right so m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial now notice I didn't write in the x direction because I already know that the initial velocity are both in the x direction this equals m 1 v1 final in the x direction plus m2 v2 final in the x direction notice i'm not worried about the negative signs yet i just want to get the magnitudes up there and afterwards as i plug in the numbers i will make sure i realize that one is moving the left one is to the right and so forth and then we'll put the right signs into our equation on the right side we do the same thing we say m1 v1 initial in the y direction plus m2 v2 initial in the y direction equals and remember here both objects were moving in the x direction so we know right away that those will become zero because there's no components in the y direction before the collision and that equals m1 v1 final in the y direction plus m2 v2 final in the y direction so we have zero equals this all right now we plug in the numbers and see what we get m1 that's 2 times m multiplied times v1 initial v1 initial was a positive 5 I'm going to leave off the units to have a cleaner equation plus m2 m2 is simply equal to m and v2 initial was a negative 8 meters per second so negative 8 equals m1 which is 2m times v1 final in the x direction that would be v1 final times v1 final times the sine of theta 1 and theta 1 is equal to 30 degrees okay plus m2 which is 1m times v2 final in the x direction now v2 final in the x direction notice that's in the negative direction so it's minus v2 final times the cosine of 60 degrees notice that the angle here is 60 degrees and we want this component right here all right so now we have our equation in the x direction now we move to the y direction equation so we have 0 equals m1 which is 2m 
times v1 final in the y direction. v1 final in the y direction is an upward direction that's positive. So it would be um, uh, v1 final times the sine of 30 degrees plus m2, which is m, times v2 final in the y direction. Now notice v2 final in the y direction is a negative direction. So it would be minus v2 final times the sine of theta 2. Theta 2 is 60 degrees. Okay, so here you want to make sure you get the signs correct. We have a minus here because v2 is in the negative direction. We have a minus there because v2 in the y direction there is negative. All right. Now simplifying things a little bit, notice that we can divide both sides of the equation by m for both equations. So all the m's disappear. m, 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 and m. We do the same over here. We have m and m. That makes things a little bit simpler to work with. Now consolidating the numbers. We have 2 times 5 is 10, minus 8, that would be positive 2, equals the sine of 30 is a half. 1 half times 2 is 1, so we get v1 final plus, oh, not plus because I have a minus here. So that would be minus cosine of 60 degrees, that's also 1 half, so minus 0 0.5 times v2 final. So there we have our first equation relating v1 and v2, but notice two unknowns, one equation, can't solve it yet. We need that second equation over there. So let's go do it. So we have zero equals uh, sine of 30 is one half. I have a problem here. I just noticed something. This should have been cosine, not sine. We're looking for v1 final in the x direction, v1 final in the x direction, v1 final in the x direction is where are we? V1 final in the x direction is V1 times a cosine of 30 degrees. This should be cosine, not sine. Okay, that makes the problem a little bit different here. Let me try this again. Okay, so what I just did was, notice, we have V1 final in the x direction, which is this component right here, and that's V1 final times a cosine of 30 degrees. There we go. So, again, we have 10 minus 8, that's 2 equals. The cosine of 30 is 0.866 times 2, which is 1.732 times v1 final. And that would be minus the cosine of 60 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times v2 final. That's better. This is the correct relationship between v1 and v2 final. All right, now going back over here. We have the sine of 30 is 0 0.5 times 2 is 1, so we have v1 final. And that would be minus the sine of 60 is 0.866, so 0 0.866 times v2 final. And there we have our second equation relating v1 final and v2 final, which we have to solve simultaneously. So let's go ahead and solve that equation for v1 final. So we have v1 final is equal to 0 0.866 v2 final. And I'll take this and substitute that in here for v1 final. If we do that, we get 2 equals 1.732 times v1 final, which is 0 0.866 times v2 final minus 0 0.5 v2 final. All right, consolidate a little bit more. My, my calculator is hiding here somewhere. There it is. All right. 1.732 times 0.866 minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 equals, and that gives me 2 equals v2 final. And so, well, that means v2 final is equal to 2. All right, that came out just perfect. And then we come over here, and we say that v1 final is equal to 0 0.866 times 2. That means v1 final is equal to 1.7 three, two, and of course that's in meters per second. And this should also be in meters per second. So let me turn it around. So that's V2 final equals two meters per second. There we go. All right, and does that make sense? Let's see here. Um, V2 final, so two meters per second, and V1 final 1.732. That looks fairly reasonable. There you go. That's how we do that.